Good morning. We'll wait for a few minutes for people to hop on here. I can't, again, my live doesn't work really good. I don't know why I can't see comments um, <coughs> when we're doing the videos, but I can see them after the fact for whatever reason. Um, but boy, do we have some things for you today. So, I hope yeah. that you all pay close attention to what's going on. And my main message for you all is get your kids out of government schools. Huh. Yeah. Y'all y'all can hate me all you want for saying that. I get so much hate, so many messages, nasty comments on social media. I'm well, gonna get my coffee. There's um if there's any left you can taunt me y'all. Yeah, it's a lot of a lot of people are okay with you saying you know, plant a tomato in a pot at all cost. Be be productive. Grow something, some some food, or uh, uh, use the space you have. They're they're okay saying. Uh, you know, uh, maybe even with a little bit of uh, you know religious radicalism, uh, because maybe they come to expect it. Uh, or, or they find it easy to write off because, uh, you know, we've become so irreligious as a culture. Well, I say that with caveats, but, um, but whenever you say pull your children out of school, out of government, these government propaganda machines, there is no end. Well, and I'm going to tell you why here in just a minute. It. It's... Um, and so we're going to start off by saying I've got my notes here. I hope that you y'all keep notebooks, you know, write stuff down um, because there's so much going on. I can't remember all of it. But if you haven't if you haven't seen New York and now California has implemented Rule 2.13 and and this has to do with meta literacy. So what that means, and you can go find the, the little press release that the governor of New York did. And her exact words were that this curriculum would implement skills, skills um, to identify misinformation, conspiracy theories, and online hate. And so they're gonna they're going to implement this in the schools. They're gonna allow teachers to be the um, fact checkers. Yeah, essentially fact checkers. They're, they're taking the fact checker movement from social media and now they're teaching it so they're making an entire uh, platoon, uh, an entire workforce of fact checkers uh, with made up facts or their own facts, uh, personalized facts. And so that's important to um, to point out too that a lot of these a lot of these um, pushes there's the common names that are that are coming up. Soros is one of them, and he also funds Media Matters. So you all need to be aware what is being pushed. So even though these are two states, and they have not may not have implemented yet in your state. There has already been actions taken, and we've seen this for the past few years. There's already been certain certain words used, certain opinions pushed, certain agendas pushed with all within all 50 states. And so it doesn't matter that they've now put this into law. What matters is that your child, your grandchild, your nieces and nephews, if they're in the government school system, they are learning these things. They are learning lies. They're learning, um, they're, they're, they're becoming little robots. Well, so one thing, I, I'm not sure on your notes what all you've got here, but so one thing that's been a popular topic has been the transgender, uh, all of this. these things that are going on, that, that frankly... Now, these people are being linked to 
uh, pedophilia, all, all of these figureheads. Uh, ed, what is it? The editor in chief of yeah. So one let's news talk about outlet let's talk about this one real quick. Is caught with child pornography. There's a lot of arrests that are going on. Slade Somer. Slade Somer. So he was the big one, and I'm going to mention some things, and I'm going to I'm not going to use the word. Some of you will know exactly what I'm talking about when I say this. But I'm going to give you little tidbits for you all to look up. Um, but but Sled Sommer is one of the the guys who debunked Eatsagate. Uh. He debunked it. Um, and so, to reiterate, he has just been charged with child porn possession. Yeah. Uh, and to go on, prosecutors claim he produced some of the content on his phone. The assistant DA says it's one of the most uh, egregious egregious cases she has ever seen. So this guy is only looking at five to ten years in prison for what he's done. They're claiming he actually produced some of the content and did things to these children, and he's only going to get potentially five to ten years if he's convicted. If he's convicted. How how does that tie to some of what we had just said about so, government schooling? Um, so he is also involved. He's in part of the news movement um, who is who promotes themselves as working against misinformation. Um, and he, they're targeting Generation Z in this. So there's more. There's more to this that that I could give you. Um, but but understand when you start looking these things up, there are so many strings. There are so many strings and trails to follow. But I'm just getting, giving you little little tidbits. So understand, Slade Sommer was part of a group who who was out there trying to to promote. Um, and, and really target target Generation Z in, in promoting, again, again, to identify misinformation, conspiracy theories, and online hate. So you have a guy that just recently... Teaching in the schools. Right. So... It, it goes further than that. So there, there's one person I want you to ask you all to look up. Um, her name is Liz Crokin. She was the main investigator of Eatsagate. And she is in the documentary Out of Shadows. Is that what? She, yes, she may have been. She's she's in the documentary Out of Shadows, which dives into all of this. So, and her investigation was into John Podesta. I'm really hoping my video doesn't get banned. Uh, but if you don't know, using a lot of words I'm, I know, I know, I know. So I hope y'all are taking notes. I hope y'all are taking notes. Liz Crockett, Crokin and John Podesta. This is real. It has been going on for years. Stop telling me it's a conspiracy theory. Like I'm, I'm shaking. I'm so angry. There's people that have told me that I've, I've been sent nasty messages over child trafficking that I need to stop talking about it. I will not. So, so again, to reiterate, they are going to start teaching children that child trafficking, the, these porn addicts, these people who are doing these nasty, wicked things, are, are conspiracy theories and misinformation. Yeah. This, you know, so I've had this conversation a number of times. <laughs> um you know, and a lot of my information hey, on your water's ready on trafficking, it doesn't come from uh, it doesn't come from YouTube. It doesn't come well. It doesn't it doesn't come here. I've got a, a heap of times in front of me this morning. I mean, I'm s sitting here. I've got heap of times. I don't think they can see it. Yeah, I don't know if that mirror looks like it's backwards to you guys. So, but I'm sure you can read it. So, so yeah, so this is the headlines, but this, e even this, this is not where I get my information. I, a lot of times I can kind of skip those articles because I've, I've already had the conversations with, uh, you know, missionary friends and 
you know, in other countries. And again, whenever we did stop ministries, we had friends who were, you know, detectives who were doctors who were uh, rescuers, things, things of that nature, uh, from different places in the world. And um, so, if if you want to support one of those, you can always reach out, and I could send you. Uh, private messages of those depending on you know if, if you really want to support someone who's training rescuers or if you want to support someone who's building infrastructures to prevent trafficking but that's where a lot of my information comes from personally um, and, and and I know everyone doesn't have those those contacts but uh, and I don't know hold of them entirely but there, it is there there's loads of corruption and censorship which is why people don't we don't use the videos and, and we don't make the habit of, of posting the direct link, so it does just, it leaves us kind of unattached and, and hopefully free from being banned from other other algorithms. But <clears throat> uh, but the, it, it continues. It continues. Some of what we began with in regard to public or government education, I will say, is, this is an initiative, um, and it's not accidental. It's not that oh no, things uh, people have really gone crazy. They have with what's put in our food, everything else, but it's an initiative. It's on. It's on purpose, and it's planned. It's systematic, and uh, and it's openly um, discussed and admitted by the World Economic Forum. Yes. They literally and take credit in the UN. And, and the UN, in partnership with the UN, they they take credit for the movement as a whole. It's actually called the PGLE, which, uh, what do we say that stands for? It is a, um, what is it, the, something primary global LGBTI equality. It's an initiative, the PGLE initiative by the World Economic Forum in partnership with the UN, which thing? they say they initiated in 2019. So a lot's happened. Now, we know this has been around for longer than 2019, yeah. but they take credit for the systematic introduction of these things within the populace. And frankly, it is a hotbed in our government schools. Well, well, and they are targeting. It's not just it's not just hearsay, but they are literally targeting children. Um, and so we, you know, we have good friends that are within the school system that are are doing their best to be good influences on on the students. But understand, this is bigger. This is bigger than than your local schools. This is bigger than your friends who are in um, the educational system in the United States. This it's a it's a huge monster and you cannot understand you cannot fight this at a local level. This is this is beyond it has grown beyond that. Well um, on purpose. I, I would uh, uh, agree and disagree. What what I think Rachel is saying is that is that you're not going to turn the ship around. You're not going to you're not going to join the school board. You're not going to you're, you're not going to change these things. You understand this is a a wide uh, concerted effort that's well documented. Um, there there are no accidents. Like my goodness, you know, there's a whole new level of craziness whenever you read that. Uh, what was it? Was it Pentagon? Or no, not Pentagon, but a U.S. nuclear station was hacked, and and those hacktivists have demanded they they'll release the information of these employees and things that they stole, so long as they would engage in research projects to create cat human hybrids. And, and that's that's a real a, a real news headline. Yeah, what what kind of craziness is we this? have we have reached a new level of crazy, a new level of crazy. And then to to take it even further, we now have a transgender suspect that thre threatens to rape Christian girls, um, inject HIV in people wearing crosses, and copycat the Nashville shooting. And so don't put it down. Don't don't shove. Well. Well, love is love, or God is God accepts all these things. He does not accept this. 
He doesn't. So please stop shoving that down my throat. Well. And, and here's the thing. We have, there is spiritual warfare going on right now. All around us. We have, we have seen it. We see it globally. We see it in our country. We see it regionally. And guess what, folks? It's here in Hancock County. If you are diving into things that do not glorify God and of, is, is of the devil, Satan, he's going to devour you. If you're doing things and promoting things that are against scripture and against what um, God is, is uh, that glorifies God and God, God uh, says is, is wrong, folks, what, what are y'all doing? I don't understand. I do not understand how you can dive into something and then want to glorify God on Sunday. I, I just cannot. I can't. And call me hateful. Go ahead. I've had all the nasty messages. And if you send me a nasty message, I'm just going to delete it and ignore you. But we're at the point where I am so sick and tired that I've got to accept this. That somebody can threaten to rape girls, inject HIV into people wearing a cross. That is hate. That's wicked and deceitful and evil. I'm not going to accept that. Please don't tell me to. Well, and, uh, you know, with all of this, so I made a comment, and you're not going to turn the ship around, but at the same time, you can fight it at the local level, but only in such the sense that you're not turning the boat around, you can jump ship. You can jump ship. Look, we're, we're entering the holidays. You're coming to Christmas break. I want to tell you a story. Um, we, we weren't homeschoolers, okay? We, there was a time, oh, you better watch out. there was a time we weren't homeschoolers and, um, and so we said, listen, it's good. There's good people. We do. We have friends. There's people I love that have worked and had good careers. I've got friends even today that are in the public school and, and that, that strive as adults, not students. As adults, they're salt and light, or try, they try to be salt and light within those communities. And so, um, I'm, I'm saying that uh, with, with compassion toward all of them. And, and that's why it's, it's those people that convinced us to stay or try to stay within that, that government schooling system. And we were involved. We tried to be the good parents. You know, now it's an act of, Ministry. When you listen to people talk, a lot of Christians and churches to support the public school, it's like one and the same. They don't care about the initiatives. They don't care about the philosophies. They, they, it just seems good. And we, we were those people, and we strove to be good at it. And we realized, and we waited. Whenever the the Lord directed our steps, and we were confronted with certain scenarios that we thought it was the best decision. Mind you, we were not confronted with what you're seeing on the news today. Mind you, I think anyone who leaves their kid in a public school now is plumb crazy. But but as we waited through those and were confronted with scenarios and we made the decision, we said, well, let's get our ducks in a row. Let's not be hasty. Let's take our time. And looking back, I wish we were much more hasty. I wish we pulled yeah. them at Christmas break, but a time similar where we're at now. We'd already made the decision and we said, well, let's wait. Let's see how things go. I'm that was you, a mistake. We were those people. And for us, it was a mistake. For us, our, our, our child, our students suffered during that time. And, and we, we should have just pulled them. You know, you're good parents. You love your children. No one's going to love them more. And, and what I mean is don't farm it out. I'm not asking you to farm it out to someone else. I'm not asking you to break the bank by sending them to some lucrative private school that costs you thousands of dollars a year. I'm, I'm telling you, God has equipped you to do this. He's called you to it. He has said that children are a heritage of the Lord. Who are they a heritage for? The parent. Well, and you. I want to I say, too, it's not just your job to um, to identify these these agendas and maybe perhaps even poor influences but I've even had to be careful who my kids engage with at the homeschool level um, sure we are not in a co-op for several reasons that's one of them um, because I know that there are people that do not have the same 
values as I do. And just because a child is homeschooled does not mean that they're going to be a good influence on my child. It's my responsibility to raise them in the love and admonition of the Lord. But that's also that's also um, a command to to be aware of who's around your child. So when you're homeschooling, co-ops are, are, are an option. But be aware that there are parents, there, there, there are other adults that are teaching that may not agree with you on a lot of things, important issues. And there are also other children who may be allowed to do certain things at home or say certain things that can influence your child. And in the home, and again, homeschooling has become very popular. There's a lot of people that 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 are um, that are pulling their kids and doing it. But I also want you to be aware that that they can um, influence your child still in the wrong way. And it's not just you know, it's not safe. It's just not safe. You have to be aware and always have your guard up around um, around others who who your child is around. Um, I'm by no means a helicopter parent. I'm by no means um, controlling over what my kids do. But right now, I'm I'm trying to shape them and mold them into what good God desires for them to be. And so, I'm going to be very um, careful about who is around my child. I'm even very careful with family. I'm very careful with, um, you know, there are certain conversations that they may have with family. And guess what? I have to go home and I have to discuss certain things with them because, unfortunately, there are, there are family that don't have the same values as we do. That's just that's just the way it is. Well, and uh, well, you know, so our approach is not it's not even sheltering. You know, right. there's times we run across these unfortunate things they will it, but it's a matter of being able to step away from those those conversations and and talk about it with your child well what did you see what did you hear what did right. we notice uh we saw a movie the other day and i didn't know the producer or whatever it just happened to be and, and we see the lgbtq stuff pushed twofold uh in an animated film so we said ah so we we pulled back after the movie talked about it man this part was funny but here's the problem what what did we notice? Did you all notice this? Maybe you didn't notice. That's even more dangerous because now these producers nominalize uh, those things. That's why some of us saying what we're saying is offensive. Is because it's been nominalized. It's been normalized, and uh, and we're going beyond that even now. But it does begin somewhere. You know, people want to blame our, our tendency, and, and I think this is as Americans. I think that it's what has fed our culture for so long is is that we look for a boogeyman. Um, we we look for who the bad guy is. All of our movies, all of are based around hero, villain, uh, role reversal. But it's still in those roles. Um, with your children, we have these talks with the kids. You know, we look at wars that ours have a special interest in in historical uh, and, and wartime history and. And the reality is, is there is no good guy and bad guy. They, there are a lot of bad actors on all sides of the fence. So we have to keep that biblical worldview and, and talk about it. So it's not sheltering your kid. We're, we're just saying um, those promises, those kids are heritage to you. If your grandparents, it, man, you're, they, it's your heritage as well. Your children and your children's children. You, you have a... Time there's a one special article in the paper I was reading. I, I don't often get to sit down and just and read from the paper like I like because of all of the the headlines they send uh, just daily in the email that I'm able to read. But uh, is seeing it the boomer? It, well, it's just essentially boomers. Your country needs you, and they talk about as grandparents. You know, you have the opportunity to shape to pour back into your family, doing not just a a personal service, but a communal service, and and uh, so you're able to do the same. Support support your children who are trying to raise their children, and uh, man, restore the family. You know, it was literally one generation ago. I, I don't think my grandparents. My I'm young, okay, with thirty <laughs> the ripe age of thirty five years old. I think I'm fairly young. I realize that. I don't have the wisdom that some of this older generation before me 
has that my parents have and, and things. But <clears throat> my grandparents did not have some inflated retirement. And yet they made it because they had children who took care of them. You know, that, that among the many things that I can say, my parents took care of their parents insofar as they were able. Um, and so, uh, and the same is true, I believe, for Rachel's family, that mm-hmm. we saw a faithful faithfulness in family. That's a that's an old concept. What we're seeing now, where you work hard, teach your children to uh, make for themselves, to borrow money in order to have something, that's a new concept that has failed. That's a uh, something that, that tears down the family. The concept that your children aren't your health care or they aren't your retirement, that's a new concept that has failed. You work your life away in order to have that retirement taken away uh, so that you can just try to keep yourself out of a nursing home because you've sent your kids away and encouraged them to go somewhere else. Um for a livelihood and everything else. This is a problem. Listen, trafficking, the whole idea, like, uh, so in Honduras, uh, is one place where we're involved. Um, a lot of people don't understand. We want to throw money in an offering plate. We want to, we want to create orphanages. We want to create this, uh, pseudo solution. When the reality is you, you have to build, you have to build that family economy. So they stay where they're at. So you teach p- grandparents and parents how to, to parent and how to raise their children to love and admonition of the Lord, to give their children hope so that they can stay and be useful in the economy, so they can uh, have skills that, that grow their, um, their, their families, you know. All right, so I've got a couple more things that I want to talk about. Um, and so I, I brought up the Rule 2.13 in New York, I don't know if this is part of that. I don't know. I haven't done. I haven't done research. But they are now in the past two months. I think they have. This has come up as a topic in New York, and I think it's finally passed this month. Um, quarantine camps in New York. So while everybody's worried about conflicts overseas. New York has silently put into to law the establishment of quarantine camps. And so what this means is, again, I think we saw this the past two years. If an authority tells you you need to leave your home and you need to go to this designated spot and you resist, they will call the police. They will, they will forcibly remove you from your home. And we're just, we're, we're also talking about your children, um, your grandparents. They, they can, by law now, if, if they find you, and I don't know the stipulations and how they're determining this, but they can remove you from your home and send you to a, a designated spot. Um, and so. My big question on all this is there's been a lot of things like this that's come up. Uh, quarantine camps, we thought, did, did you think that the, Pandemic was over. What what are they talking about? Or new viruses? Or uh, extending extending um, emergency powers? Or what? Bit, what is that look, all look, look at this like? picture. This is from Massachusetts. This November fourteenth. Look at all these people. Look what they have on. You think it's over? It's not over yet. <laughs> It's not over. They're pushing again. Um, and so I just want to make you aware that New York has has started this. Again, I haven't done much research into it yet. But don't be, again, I think this, I keep on saying this. Please don't be distracted about what's going on over here. They want you to look over here um, and, and realize that there are things that are going on that could affect you. Yeah, so they, they've got a lot that's going on in the way of these emergency powers, pandemics, things like that. I, I don't know what lies around the corner. Well, well, and again, now, now the whole thing with the, you know, the, is coming out, um, the efficiency of, of, and everything else. We, we know, we, I mean, we already knew this. Well, we knew that it was ineffective, that there were potential, 
um, health issues and, and understand there's something going on in China now where children are getting pneumonia. Do you realize that they are now saying these children are getting pneumonia because of their lack of immune system? That whole time during COVID when they were stuck in their homes and they weren't coming in contact with, with things, other things in their environment, they're blaming that on, on, on that. So, so when you get sick this year and you, you, you decided to stay home and, and sit on your couch and not do anything and not allow your immune system to do what it's supposed to do, keep that in mind. They are now saying that children are, are becoming susceptible to, to this sickness because of their lack of, well, essentially because of their isolation that they chose. Well, so here, here's a few that I found interesting is it always concerned me. Um, there's n numbers. Um, we, we have a lot of numbers thrown at us, you know, on the news and everywhere else. And, and it's, it's easy to misinterpret those or, or to push them one direction or another. I've always said, you know, these corporations and governments, I mean, they hire people to push a pencil. And uh, if you'd like a good example of this, go on one of those timeshare vacations, you know, <laughs> you will see them. They're good at their jobs. Uh, but it's, it's a phantom. It's a phantom market, phantom reality. And um, – so I like to look at, so, sometimes you can zoom in on the details and you can get these little micro uh, micro statistics, but you can also zoom out and get these macro statistics. And one that I think is telling is is when you look at uh, the large numbers, the large numbers. And so one of those might be just deaths. Go to CDC and research how many total deaths, like from everything, man, that people died in car accidents, everything else. I don't think they include abortions into those statistics. So just, just to make that note, that there's a lot more people dying uh, that I think aren't reported in that, if we count abortion, that great travesty. However, when we use their numbers, okay, the CDC was a, not quite, but almost a governing body, uh, an authority uh, for these sort of issues and for health and wellness, well, they um, have said, uh, when you just look, I'll just let you look that up and you can survey and see that uh, over the course of, so from 2019, so this is the the inauguration of the, the pandemic and the implementation of a uh, thingamajigger, okay, and what happened from 2019 beyond was an increase in, so in one year, not a spike, not a spike prior to inoc inoculation, but a, an increase in total deaths in America that had not been matched essentially for 20 years. It took 30 years from the time that America had more than 2 million deaths in 1982 or 3. It was 30 years. It wasn't until uh, 2003 that they even had a, 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 an increase of half a million over that 30 year period. Now that it went up, and a lot of that we can say is due to increased population. We expect the deaths to rise if there's more people because the percentage will stay the same. So, but the reality is, is at 2019, a more recent history, it, it was nearly 20 years, just, just uh, around the year 2000 when, when we saw that, that level of increase of, of half a million. And yet, we saw that a 20 year increase go straight up on your graph, okay? Straight up in one year. They got a 20 year increase in the amount of overall deaths for every cause in one year. That has increased each following year as it should. Like it was just a, a giant tick up. Now, what I find ironic in this is this mm -hmm. obviously was not a result of overall population. The population did not increase 
in that rate. You did not see this drastic uptick. As a matter of fact, we have seen a downturn. We've seen a downturn in um, in reproduction, mm -hmm. in fertility. We've seen a downturn. We've seen an increase in infant mortality. We have seen an increase no. in the number okay. of uh, unmarried births. We've seen all of these things that shows us a fragmentation of the family that has brought about the ruining of our nation. And so what what can we attribute that to? I think it's a number of things. I'm not saying that, don't, don't hear me say, well, there was a boogeyman, it was COVID, or it was the administration or anything. Don't, don't hear me say that. I, I think the ball's in your court. I think it's in our court. I think that we need to get our head out of the sand and act like people, act like families, and... and well, and I uh, think there was a lot of godly men who, you know, Vadu Bakum being one of them, that really, I mean, early on was saying, you know, the nuclear family is at risk. And, but again, we have a lot of local pastors that refuse to speak on that just simply because they don't want to irritate their congregations. Um, and I and I would say, you know, if your pastor hasn't spoken on this, then you probably need to find a new church. If if he's not talking about the things that are going on in the world and pointing you towards Scripture, um, you know, toward the commandments of God, um, if he's not, you know, cautioning you against the the type of fellowship you have outside of church, I highly suggest that you find a new church, find a new pastor, find a church that's going to that wants to see you grow in Christ and not in, in worldly wisdom. Um, but there's one more thing that I want to talk about, and then we have to go out and feed the animals. So, digital euro. Um, and so, they just now, and during this month, uh, ruled to go ahead and go forth with the, with the digital euro. Um, they're looking at this taking two years to, to finalize a rule book. Um, and this is, I think this is a quote. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read my writing. It will also include testing and experimentation to develop a digital euro that meets both the euro system's requirements and user needs. For example, in terms of user experience, privacy, financial inclusion, and right then that sentence right there, environmental footprints. What does that mean? An environmental footprint. Well, I think we all know what that means. That means that uh, we're all being asked to bow to this uh, new pagan religion that centers around global warming or climate change or something else. Um, you know, again, I, so numbers, uh, I, I like numbers. Not everybody is, um, and uh, but I do because I think numbers, you know, though they can be manipulated, uh, though they can be skewed, um, they, they don't lie. And I, the way I teach math in our home is that numbers are a language, okay? Uh, you know, one through zero or however you put that. Those are your alphabet, and um, so we learn every problem in multiple forms until it clicks. And um, so I think the numbers help. So uh, what's an example of this? Just if you're one of those that says, I'm with you on, on let's be good stewards of the planet. Let's not pollute. Let's not. None of that's godly. All of creation groans for the for the coming of the Lord. So So we know that there are effects that... Um, subject all of creation to futility. And so we want to be godly as Christians. We want to see something flourish. We want things to be beautiful. We want, uh, we don't want these rigid industrial looking places. We want, we want flowers and trees and fruit and birds and we want it all. So, because that's what's godly. And so we pursue and create dominion. We bend the earth to this Edenic place that it, started as and uh so in so in doing that 
just ask yourself. So I'm, a, I'm with you on the stewardship. I'm with you on, on the good, good uh, disposal practices, things like that, recycling. However, when we say the reduction of carbon footprint, um, there's a number of things that can be said. What, the way this is applied from our, our climate specialists of the day is uh, to re- they define that in man-made carbon. Okay, whatever the man-made carbon is. And there's really no distinction in all of their language that really isolates the human himself from this footprint. You, I, as, as living organisms, we are a carbon footprint. They, there, there literally is an elimination of or it could be interpreted an elimination of humans. Uh, and that's not far-fetched because in order to eliminate the footprint, the carbon footprint of cows, they eliminate cows. Yeah. So, so don't, don't think that's far-fetched what I'm saying. Uh, but ask the question this, how much of our air is carbon dioxide? Look that percentage up. How much of the air you breathe it, on a percentage basis is carbon dioxide. Then take that small percentage of carbon dioxide and then ask how much of that is actually produced by humans. Now you've got a fraction, a fraction of a percent that actually comes from, from our uh, breathing, from our manufacturing, things like that. So the worry is incredibly inflated. Um, our, our world is on its foundation. It's held there. Uh, because God keeps it there. All things are, you know, in Him live and have their being. Uh, you know, He holds all things together by the power of His Word. You know, we can look to a number of scriptures. You know, that, that last one from Hebrews 1. But uh, anyway, yeah, carbon footprint, that's a, that's a dangerous one. You know, environmental we, footprint. Environmental footprint. So that's about all I've got today. Um, I'm hoping later on to make a video on making cheese. Did you know that you can make mozzarella cheese by just a couple of ingredients um, within 30 minutes? It's really easy, simple, and anybody can do it. So I'm hoping to get that done and put it on the YouTube channel. Um, Again, I know that Facebook doesn't like to promote our YouTube links, so you may not see it in your news feed. Um, So you can visit YouTube or you can check out the farm page and um, hopefully it's it's a really interesting thing that you can do with the kids today, tomorrow, this week. Simple, easy, fast, Um, and it's really good, I think. Are you going to put it on apple pie? (laughs) Maybe. uh, That's an inside (laughs) joke. I'll let you in. The, um, what is it, a log cabin? We've got a Pioneer cookbook. It's got a lot of those funny sayings, and it says, uh, apple pie without the cheese is like a kiss without a squeeze. So, there's your funny for today. But I hope you all have a great Saturday. I hope that you're productive, um, that you make plans with your family, and I hope that this holiday season that you're focusing on the joy and the peace that God grants through His Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so be be happy. Look, everything... Um, Again, there's a lot going on. Look, the world is burning itself down, but that's the problem, I think, among Christians and families is we are too much of the world. When, when you make those separations, when you, when you pull out of some of those things, uh, you know, the risen Christ gives the command in Revelation, come out of her, my people. Uh, when you make that separation, when you can be in the world, the less of it, there is a lot more joy to be had. There's, um, there is laughter and, and there's family. There's family and there are children and, and people say, well, it's hard or whatever. Maybe, maybe it is, but I've, as I've said over and over again, even this week, if you're one of those that we've interacted with, you've heard me say this week that, you know, those pioneers are this er- what seems like an earlier way of life, which I would say is not that old of a way of life. Yeah. It, it seems like it's more difficult for people uh, or was more difficult for them. But I argue they had rocking chairs on their front porch that they actually got to sit in. They had time to sit in those. They had time 
to make ten children in their small cabins and and to spend that time together. Look, man, that's pretty good to me. Uh, we we all need to slow down. Every no one I have ever talked to has said, "No, man, I need to do more." We, we we're doing all we can. We're enslaved. We're ch- being choked out by the thorns and thistles of this world, man, you're too much of the world. And uh, so, so come out of her, slow down, have some joy, and uh, and and uh, maybe some mozzarella cheese. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you all have a great Saturday and that you're preparing yourself for Lord's Day tomorrow. Amen.